After tonight's win and our fifth win in pod play in the last two years, we'll start with an opening statement from head coach Dan D'Antoni. Uh, very physical game. I know Jeff told those guys, look, this is a soft team, we got to pound them. <laughs> they, they came in and uh, were very physical. And you got to give it to him. You know, he does a good job down there. Their kids played extremely hard. But, uh, I thought we held up in there. You know, we were a little bit more physical than I thought we were, you know. So uh, it was a good win. And, uh, got us to above 500 in the conference. Uh, on track, we just got to keep putting the numbers out. But uh, we got us even for the season. So good win defensively. We keep getting better. Just thought we did some good things. We gotta make some free throws when it counts. We gotta get better at that. And, uh, a couple of shots, big shots. We, you know, winning and losing is uh, just making the shots the right time. We're about halfway home on that one. So Jared, Jared hits some big ones. Mm -hmm. He shoots them, but we gotta get, we gotta get the rest of them. It's <laughs> time to. You really gotta have that shot. It goes down. That's what teams are winning in tournaments do. Five players in double figures. Uh, is it nice to see everyone kind of chip in and contribute? Not really. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as you score. I don't care if one guy scores 80. You know, one, nobody else does as long as the other team has less. I, you know, that, that kind of gets distributed by how they play defense and uh, just the play of the game. I don't, we don't try to do that. I don't try to eliminate anybody from scoring on any play. If we play a free and open system. Sometimes that's why. We get better toward the end of the year. They start figuring out where they belong, where they fit in the system, especially when you have a young team. Uh, and this was a young team. Everybody was playing new positions. So hopefully we'll keep that going. Our turnovers have come down. They were it used to be 17, 18. It was 13, a little high. I'd like to keep it at 10 and under. Uh, but uh, uh, we had, uh, I think, we bust them pretty good, 20 to 5 on their turnovers. That's the difference in the ball game. Coach, uh, four points tonight on the bench. Is that something you're addressing in practice this week? How many points? Uh, four on the bench tonight. Uh, we only have four points from the bench? Yes, yes sir. I see. I thought y'all told me it's all even. No, I'd <laughs> like to have a few more. <laughs> uh, the stars were in double digits. Uh, okay. Just, you know, you want everybody just to play good. I, I, scoring to me is just going to happen. I, I don't. Pinpoint. The only time I'll pinpoint it is it gets down toward the end of the ball game. And it's a big, I might, like the one we, we came down, I don't know if you remember, but we went to a wide uh, stack. And we thought with Iron in the game, we could pop Jared free. And so I set Jared up, pop free, hit the three. And that was a big bucket for us. And, uh, uh, but I don't normally do that. Tavion normally come in and take. He made two big plays. Made the steal without laying it up. Then he made the drive in the lane and I got a foul and made the three-point play. He he and Jared usually step up toward the end, but most of the game it's the ball's just going where it goes. You know, we don't I don't pigeonhole and I don't choose the shots really. They choose it and, and the offense flows and how the defense guards the offense really determines who's gonna score that night. They uh, I remember uh, Mar Amari Stoudemire in Phoenix, and this is, this is a good one. When they were, he was running up and down the floor, and he wasn't getting the ball because they were shooting three and they were going in. And he'd run down the floor, set the pick, run down the floor, and they called timeout. And as he was going over, they just, what do I look like, Carl Lewis? And so <laughs> Mike said, you'll just keep running. I swear it'll, it'll flip. Second half, they went out to the three-point shooters. I think he had 40 points second half where he just dunked it. But that was one of the greatest lines ever. What do I look like, Carl Lewis? <laughs> but, you know, it's just a free-flowing offense. And the uh, ball finds uh, the energy. We'd always tell them, ball finds energy. Put yourself in it. And uh, I don't restrict you as to what taking a good shot, not a bad shot. But I do not restrict good shots. You mentioned a little bit of toughness tonight, especially with the front court rebounding and things like that. I think ODU didn't have a, a second chance point until about 15 minutes to go in the game. I know that you know that was an emphasis this week, but the front court, what, what have they done to, to sort of solidify things down there? Well, I was trying to get uh, a 
the backcourt to pick off some of those guys that went in, you know, from the outside to go rebound. I'll have to look at tape and see if that happened. But uh, just the, you know, the and my, we're athletic on all. I mean, we, we're supposed to rebound. And, and I think the last time they got a bunch because they were all short. We were on the outside to rebound. The ball went short and they rebounded. They're a little bit quicker in there. And, but uh, you know, I thought Michael Byers, you know, he didn't shoot the ball well tonight, but he rebounded. He didn't make mistakes. He has no turnovers. And before, he combined poor shooting with turnovers. That's deadly. That, that puts your uh, <laughs> dear ear on the uh, bench. But, uh, you know, he played a good floor game. I thought he rebounded well. Jansen had a good game. Shoot the ball better, more alert, more alert defensively. And, uh, you know, he had to make adjustments from guarding the basket to guarding the three point line because you have Iron and Gordon out guarding the basket, threw, throws him out. Got a little bit worried, and I did it anyway. I took Iron out. I don't know if y'all remember, but I left Jansen and Mike here. I was a little bit worried about would we protect the rim and rebound well enough with them in there, but they were in the zone. I wanted to use those two to. See if I could get them out, but you know what? They rebounded well. They defended well. And, uh, they could do that. We got some good things ahead of us. You're starting to see teams defensively respect the three-point line a little bit more. I know you all struggled early in the year, but but Jeff talked about not you know not doubling Iron and, and not helping off on uh, Tavian and, and Jerry trying to get in the, into the lane. Because the very first part of the game, they didn't show. We went layup, layup, Iron just going down into the off of the pick and roll. Then they started showing, which meant you hit and you go out to the threes. And that's why I was saying we don't we don't determine who shoots, the defense determines it. And uh, uh, but uh, I know the La Tech game when Mike had that big game and Jansen I think shot the ball decent that game too. The court just opened up and Tavion started getting into the laps. And that's the whole theory is that if you can shoot threes and push the defense out then off the <laughs> dribble. You got guys that can attack the rim, and, you know, that's better than posting up. Now we're trying to, uh, Mike's gone to a total little man game, no post ups. We're trying to do a uh, hybrid of both of them. And, uh, maybe at the end of the year this summer we'll sit down and decide who, who, who it worked out best for. Jared and Jensen mentioned that um, at times, they're kind of fueled by the crowd based on how their you know energy and motivation. How <coughs> noticeable is it for you as a coach when the crowd's up on their feet and involved in this game? You know what? And I, I guess maybe I was a little different. I never heard it when I played. I, you can hear a roar, but you don't hear individual voices or anything like that. I, I think that <coughs> for me, and, and now not for young men, but even as a player, though, I don't remember. I was all in anyway. I don't care if I had one person out there watching. I was, a, I was all into the game. So, but for a lot of people, from what I understand, that, uh, that plays a big part. And uh, I'll tell you what that big crowd does: the enthusiasm. It makes for a program. It gets people excited around your program. And that's what, that's why we need these fans to keep coming so we can keep building the Marshall brand of basketball that we can get this at a real high level. It's not there yet. We got, you know, one team got into where I'd like to be all the time. But we have to do some things here in supporting the program. And what, what happens, uh, how you get the support of the program is by having fans come and be avid. And then you seem to be able to get management to move on things that you have to do to put this program at another level. For basketball, it's been a Long time you think about it, it's been, I think, the last major investment, three million, I'd say over three million, is what I consider major. 1981 when they built the camp. And uh, they made it. That was a $30 million budget that they built with grade 10. And guess what you did? <laughs> but uh, you haven't done that, and we're, we're lacking in the look and feel of a program that can sustain that NCAA. Hopefully, uh, we're going to get this uh, practice facility. Might help on free throws. They're going to have about five or six baskets instead of two. Uh, we won't be practicing in the uh, rec center for games. I, people don't know that, but 
that chips away at your program. And if uh, we, we got to somehow, I hope, before I leave, get that solved so that uh, this program can live. It can really help Marshall University. It's a, it's a chance mid-majors can play. And our budget's decent, but if it got bumped uh, a, a, a bit, then, you know, the Gonzaga, there's no reason why Gonzaga or Wichita State or Dayton or any of those, I can name a bunch of uh, mid-majors that can compete nationally. But, a lot of games are won by what the program looks like before you even throw the tip. And uh, I think if we have to realize that, get behind this, that's what the fans can do. Just keep supporting it and see if we can't move this program forward and uh, get to where we can uh, help Marshall. I have a national type of name and brand and uh, uh, bring kids to come to school here. It's a great school. And it's a lot of fun. I had a great time here. And, you know, it served me well. And, I think it's serving my players as well. And uh, we've got uh, guys doing well once they leave here. They're all, all graduating. They're all going to work. A lot of them are West Virginians. I think that's a good way to keep it. Good. All right. All right. I appreciate it.